my perspective as an emergency physician is once patients reach us in the emergency department, things have often gone off the edge. They have gone too far. They are now very obvious. When people reach us with depression, suicidality, um, bipolar disorder, and all of the manifestations and life changes that can occur there, whatever the mental health issue becomes, once they see me, it's a little bit too late. We have challenges in the emergency department with obtaining resources and obtaining placement for those individuals. But really, I think what's much more important is getting help and getting people to the resources that they need long before they end up in the emergency department. And that's, I think, where Glenn Close and her organization really come into play. And so I'd like to start with Glenn. What brought you specifically to become such a, 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 an aggressive champion for mental health awareness? Um, it was actually my sister, Jessie, yeah. who came to me uh, one day out of the blue. We'd been visiting my parents. And she said, um, I need your help. I can't stop thinking about killing myself. And her son, uh, wonderful Kalen, had already been uh, in a psychiatric hospital and was diagnosed with uh, schizoaffective disorder. Right. But even that was... For me, I didn't quite understand what he was going through, mm -hmm. even though I, I visited him when he was there. But when my sister Jessie came to me in person and asked and said that, it hit me. It, it, was, it was a profound wake-up call. Uh, and my mother and I were able to help her get help. But we, I realized that we had no vocabulary in my family for mental illness. We never yeah. talked about it. My father was a doctor. Uh, we just never talked about yeah. it, and that almost cost Jesse her life. And so they asked, Kaylin and Jesse asked me to do something to help fight the stigma uh, because they found that uh, the stigma could be just as bad and horrible to live with as the illness them, it themselves. So I'm hearing two things. On the one hand, there was essentially a lack of awareness, languaging in terms of asking for help. But did they, they had some self-awareness then that there was a problem, but they weren't comfortable coming forward? I don't think they knew there were, what the problem was. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly my, my daughter didn't know what was happening when she observed her son having what was a, a psychotic break. Right. And it actually was a friend of hers who had studied psychology in college. Mm -hmm. He spent some time with Kate on alone and said to Jesse afterwards, I think he has schizophrenia. And yeah. that for Jesse was like a, a you know, uh, a, a shock. Yeah. Um, so, but when Kalen came back uh, from, the, from the hospital, all his friends left him. Not one friend came back. And mm. he had been yeah. the leader of the gang. Um, and he's now in his mid-30s, and one friend has come back. Um, so, and Jessie was afraid to, when, when she was diagnosed finally with bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. she was afraid to tell the friends of her, of her young, her little girl uh, that she was battling with a mental illness because she thought that they wouldn't allow right. their children to come and play. Right. So it really has an insidious, toxic effect yeah. on everyday life, and you simply just have to start talking about it. And so um, I love talking about yeah. it. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> you great. Know, we, found, we found that there was a lot of, a lot of depression, right. suicide in our family, never talked about. Hmm. Um, yeah. So that's the main, the main um, goal, the main mission of Bring Change to Mind, start the conversation. And just by starting the conversation, and uh, making people feel that they're not alone, they're not, they don't have to be full of shame, they don't have to sure. be fearful, um, that will literally save lives.